It's time to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey again and welcome back to the new best build of all time which brings us very close to absolute perfection for creating builds in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. In my previous best build of all time we already managed to completely negate the negative effect of the Corfu engraving and today we will take it a step further and further improve this build. As I already explained to you, minus 100% resistance basically doubles the damage you take from enemies and by adding 100% ignore half damage into your build it will literally work as plus 100% resistance bringing you back to receiving the normal damage from all your enemies. So this build plays at full health, you will receive up to 6 or 7 hits before you can actually die and I have even added permanent fire damage to our weapons and permanent fire arrows for our bow so that you will never have to craft any arrows. And if you really want to you can also exchange that to permanent poison damage on your weapon or permanent poison arrows if you are more into the poison damage. And we will still have 675% critical damage, 100% crit chance and you can infinitely use Aris Madness whenever you want to without having any major loss of damage. To achieve all this we actually have to drop armor penetration. Armor penetration mainly improves your weaker attacks which means that your light attack is down to only 1.7 million damage but your heavy attack still deals up to 2.7 million damage and the charged heavy attack will still deal over 8 million damage. Ring of Chaos will deal 4.5 million damage, Fury of the Bloodline will deal 15 million damage in an animation cancel and the overpower attack will deal between 27 and 30 million damage if you hit your enemies properly from behind. The range damage is still well over 10 million damage for the devastating shot and even over 13 million damage for the predator shot. So there is no real loss of damage even though for the multi shot you will still deal up to 4 million damage. Assassinations of any type are absolutely no problem even your normal assassinations will well exceed the needed 3.5 million damage for assassinating any merc which means you can simply overrun them with a normal assassination, use rush assassination or whatever you actually want to. Even Aris Madness will be up to 12 million damage for the initial activation blast and up to 2 million damage when you just attack normal enemies with it. This makes it absolutely powerful and if you want to you can also engrave the infinite Aris Madness perk. This build is a wet dream for every Assassin's Creed Odyssey player and you will never have to craft any arrows again. So definitely check it out and also check out our discord server or become a patron or a youtube member if you want to support this channel. In our inventory we have 243,000 warrior damage and 635,000 assassin damage. And thanks to the big hunt though of course these 243,000 warrior damage will also be used as our hunter damage when we shoot our arrows. The big hunt bow multiplies all your warrior damage by a factor of 1.6 because it adds all its dps to your left melee weapon making it a way stronger weapon than the right one. So make sure that you always select the correct melee weapon when you do your attacks and especially also when you shoot your arrows because your arrow damage will use your warrior damage from the weapon you currently select. Selected. Even though this build has a little less warrior damage than the best build of all time, by using the weapon damage becomes fire damage permanently on our weapon, we will completely make up for this loss of damage. So the only thing you actually lose by using this build is not having armor penetration. Of course you could still swap armor penetration instead of using the weapon damage becomes fire damage. That way you will have the same damage as in the best build of all time and you still don't have to worry about crafting any arrows. Of course you can also use just the weapon damage becomes poison damage but you will have less percent of poison damage from the ability in your ability tree so that will give you a little less amount of damage than having fire damage on your weapons. If you don't have a perfect warrior sword then you can easily get one from the friend they need quest in Attica. Simply lie to hater to keep the sword and then you have your first perfect sword. Of course you can also do that again in a new game plus if you missed it. On the second melee weapon slot we will also use a perfect warrior sword with warrior damage, critical damage and damage swords and here we will use the convert 50% hunter damage bonus to all damage. We are using hunter damage conversion because with the big bow we literally don't use our hunter damage. So with the Corfu engraving which gives us 200% to all our base damage types we can convert another 100% from the hunter damage conversion to become usable warrior and assassin damage. So to maximize your warrior and assassin damage you have to use the hunter damage conversion and the hunter damage conversion with the Corfu engraving will give you 300% warrior damage and 300% assassin damage. 
On the big hand bow we will engrave basic arrows become fire arrows because when you toggle the auto craft for basic arrows and all your basic arrows become fire or poison arrows then you have an infinite amount of them and you don't have to craft them because you will just use your basic arrows. The big hand bow itself doesn't have any magic engravings, it simply adds all its DPS to your left melee weapon because it is a glitched item that simply doubles your warrior damage and increases your hunter damage by a factor of 4 by simply using your warrior damage instead of your hunter damage when you shoot your arrows. This fact alone makes it by far the best item in the entire game, no matter if it's a blue item or not. So definitely use your 200 free helix credits to get this item. Now it gets really interesting because on our headgear we have warrior damage, chance to ignore half damage, damage swords and 20% crit chance. Normally you would also expect to have 20% damage with swords and daggers here, but we will actually sacrifice this in favor of using 100% crit damage on our belt. If you do the mass rate you will realize that 243,000 warrior damage with 100% critical damage more is slightly better and giving you 1.88 million damage for your light attack and 270,000 warrior damage with 100% less critical damage would only give you 1.82 million. On our bracers we will use warrior damage, 50% critical damage, 100% critical damage while full health and 10% crit chance. However if you want to have infinite RS madness then you could also go for bracers that have warrior damage, 100% critical damage while full health and 10% crit chance and then you can engrave the RS madness cooldown perk from the northern traveler set which allows you to make only 2 kills to completely reset this ability instead of waiting for 2 minutes. For our belt we will use the belt of the swings which is a unique item and the only belt in the game that gives you 20% crit chance while full health and we will also engrave 100% critical damage as explained before. If you don't have the belt of the swings and you still want to get close to 100% crit chance of course you can also use a random epic item with warrior damage, 10% crit chance and 100% critical damage and then engrave the Nemean lion set engraving with 5% crit chance at full health and 25% critical damage. That way you will have 95% crit chance in your build which should be totally fine as well. On the torso we are using another unique item which are the resort shoulder pads. They have warrior damage, 40% chance to ignore half damage, 60% total armor and we will engrave 50% critical damage on it. This makes it possible to achieve 100% chance to ignore half damage without wasting any major damage. And it will almost completely cancel out the minus 100% negative resistance from the core for engraving. You will just be able to play the game as normally and you can even take up to 4 or 5 hits before you die depending on on difficulty. You will get the resort shoulder pads when you beat the entire Corfu Island DLC and it will just be added after watching the last cutscene when you log back into the game. Last but not least on the boots we have warrior damage, 20% crit chance while full health, 100% critical damage and we have the 100% all damage but minus 100% resistances from the Corfu DLC. In order to unlock this engraving just travel to Corfu Island to the Koilaidi farm and then go to the northeast to collect this engraving. The description of this engraving is actually wrong because it gives you 200% damage to all 3 base types and it also gives you another 100% when you use the hunter damage conversion. All this will give you the total stats of 558% warrior damage, we have 100% damage swords, 100% crit chance, 675% critical damage, 60% fire damage and if you would focus on poison damage you would have 45% poison damage so fire damage is definitely the better one. And you also have still a couple of negative resistances but the 100% chance to ignore half damage will totally make up for it. For the abilities we will use all the standard ones. We will start with 6th sense that slows down time and also helps you for your assassinations and your warrior attacks. Get the poison and fire arrows and then either use multi shot, devastating shot or predator shot. Predator shot is the highest damage one and devastating shot is the easiest one to use. Totally get Archery Master for the additional Hunter damage which we will convert into Warrior damage which also refills your first Adrenaline segment. Put 1 point here into Overpower Bow Strike as a bridge and then go for 3 points on the Ghost Arrows. Get the Charged Heavy Attack, Weapons Master, Gear Master is now really useful since we play at full health and then you can get 3 points into Flaming Attacks. Of course if you engrave permanent fire damage on your sword you only have to go for 1 point on the Flaming Attacks because you have fire damage anyway. Get the 40% fire damage from the fire mastery, 
then get the overpower attack which will one shot every boss in this game even with this build. Aris Madness if you have the Atlantis DLC definitely a must have. Furious of Bloodline the same if you have the Legacy DLC definitely get it. It still deals half the damage of an overpower attack and refills 4 adrenaline bars. Definitely get Ring of Chaos for crowd control and since we are playing at 100% health you definitely now have to rely on second wind to heal your character because a torch glitch only works with reduced health. And in the assassin tree go for shadow assassin which gives you 50% critical damage and an increased assassin damage. Pick up rush assassination, critical assassination is not needed but definitely go for stealth master to reduce all the noises you make and your footsteps and increase your out of combat damage overnight. For the basic mastery points which will need no more than 200 points in total you should place 12 points on crit chance, 12 points on crit damage, another 12 points on warrior damage and then go for 8 on health, 8 on armor, 12 on melee, 8 on fire and 8 on armor penetration. If you don't have enough points then you can skip all the ones we are only put 8 on. Definitely go for 15 points on damage or swords, 12 points on crit chance at full health, 12 points on crit damage while full health and then most important go for 20 points on the chance to ignore half damage because only when this ability hits 100% it always gives you half the amount of damage. If you have well over 400 points you should max out hunter damage, crit chance, crit damage, headshot, even the other hunter abilities, go for a couple of points on range resistance and even for the adrenaline or headshot kill. In the warrior tab max out warrior damage, health, armor, melee resistance, fire damage and armor penetration. And if you still have more points you should also go for a couple of points on damage dealt restored as health because that greatly helps if you get hit. In the assassin tree you should max out damage whenever time is slowed down, assassin damage, damage as swords, totally go for all the crit stuff, damage while full health, still 20 points on chance to ignore half damage is really important. Elemental resistance, a couple of adrenaline points and damage on leads and bosses. I hope you really enjoyed this. This is definitely my new favorite build. It not only solves the core from grabbing problem, it also adds permanent fire damage and eliminates any crafting for your arrows. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.